Welcome to Inside Hollywood. I'm your host, Jazzy Bell. And today we have an amazing show because we have an amazing guest. She's one of the top producers in Hollywood. You know, y'all probably seen her work, you know, a little movie called Black and Blue, you know, The Intruder Traffic, and her latest, That Tal, starring Hilary Swank and Michael Ely. We have the one and only Roxanne Taylor here with us. How are you, Roxanne? Thank you. I'm good. How are you? Thank you I'm so much for having me. Uh, thank you so much for being here. This is a long time coming. I've been wanting to interview for a very long time. Um, um, I'm all about inspiring the women out there that's doing that thing. And you're such a huge inspiration. So I can't wait to share your journey with the world. Oh, thank you so much. I'm, I'm here to share. Let's, let's do it. Let's dive in. <laughs> Get right into it. See, one thing I love about this show is that I want people to know that this didn't happen overnight for you, that you've been in the game for a very long time time people just see the success but they don't know the journey so we could give a little backstory what would you say what made you start creating films um well you know it, it was a long journey i i never actually thought i would be here today to be completely honest you know um i was a computer science major you know i won't share my uh uh, grueling world prior to that, but I'll just start, you know, from there, which is, you know, I didn't want to be a programmer, always wanted to be in Hollywood, always wanted to be in film, love filmmaking, but very timid about the camera and even doing interviews and because it's just like all the focus is on you, you know, and said, so I said, okay, well, I have the business background, if you will. So maybe I can go in through the other side. So I literally just quit. I was young. I figured what the heck worse can happen. I just go back to working for the state, installing hardware and software. Like, you know what I mean? So I took a leap of faith and had nowhere to go. Had my U-Haul. My dad and my little brother followed me to LA. I lived in a hotel temp agencies were huge at that time and so i worked at a temp agency like answering phones doing anything i could to get into entertainment and to learn every step so i pretty much learned from the beginning to the end all the roles all the responsibilities and what it takes to get there and and, and it was is really really hard because you know coming from a corporate structure to Hollywood is a whole different beast. You know what I mean? It's dominated by white men, you know what I mean? And it's based on who you know, who you're related to, and what your pocketbook looks like. And I didn't have any of those, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it was a struggle. And, it, and obviously being a woman and then being a black woman, you add that layer onto it. So we all know what that looks like, unfortunately. I mean, things are starting to shift a little bit. But, um, you know, I, I just kind of fell into this. You know, I worked my way all the way to the top. I ended up working at the Directors Guild, assisting the national executive in charge of theater awards and facilities management for the New York and LA office. And that's pretty much where I got my start and my learn about producing. My first job was the Alfred Hitchcock exhibit. That was my first, like, you know, my first production I got to do on my own. and. Of course, I supported all the awards for television and those kinds of things working there. And I was able to learn how just filmmaking worked, all the layers, all the roles, all the responsibilities. But truth be told, I couldn't hang. You know what I mean? I quit. It was super grueling. The hours were crazy. You're treated like garbage. You know what I mean? And I was like, hold on. I'm not, I'm not doing this. You know what I mean? I was like, I quit. But I circled back around and came into the business with my partner, Dion, and, you know, none of that has changed. You, you have to have super thick skin to be in this business. It is not for everybody, you know, and you got to be willing to fight constantly and keep a smile on your face, you know, grin and bear it, as they say, mm -hmm. or they will chew you up and spit you out, like, you know, and... You're only as good as your last film. You know what I mean? You're always, no matter what you do, they're always saying, 
are you an A-list producer or what highest budget you did? You know what I mean? There's always these boxes that we have to check that aren't part of the normal check boxes that everybody else. I just want equal boxes. Everybody get the same boxes. We check the same boxes to be qualified. And it just, it doesn't work like that. But I mean, I was forced to create my own because I was told no and no one would give me the opportunity. So I literally came into this by default. I didn't know I was gonna be owning my own production company and making two, three movies a year. Like I never sought out to even imagine this world, but by default and how the industry moves and treats certain people, you have to create your own or you don't get it. You know what I mean? And so just a quick, you know, because we'll be, we don't have a lot of time for me to go through the whole journey. <laughs> no, but this is good. I mean, people that know me, that follow me, know that my model in life is create, don't wait. And you're oh, pretty, you know, echoing those same sentiments. So I'm so inspired just by you saying it. I feel like, yeah, I'm on the right path. Hell, people won't give you anything. You have to create it. Hence, Inside Hollywood with Jazzy Bell. So <laughs> no, for sure. It's 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 real talk, man. And and you gotta be bold even when it's scary. Like that's my thing. Like this ain't easy. If it was, everybody would be doing it, right? So you you have to have that confidence and that willpower and that strength to like keep pushing, keep pushing. Even when you fall down, you gotta get back up and you gotta keep pushing, you know? And it's easier said than done, you know. And thank you for being transparent and saying that, you know, you were in it for a while prior to getting the Alfred Hitchcock um, project and you quit um, after that. Quick question. How long was the process for you when you delved into Hollywood, pursuing Hollywood before you got to that particular project? Um, that, that project was at the DGA. So everything that came through there, being in that department, assisting that executive, you know, um, you get those opportunities, right? And so I was probably in LA about three years or so, okay. you know what I mean? Okay. And sweet bones doing all that. But at the DGA, you have a little bit of flex because again, all the movies come through there. So you working there, you screen them. Do you know what I mean? The awards for the DGA, you get to work on them because I was in that department. You know, it was it was a dream job and I didn't even know it. You know what I mean? I was like, forget this. I am not doing this. I am not being treated like this. I am out of here. You know what I mean? But I realized years later, he really is the one who molded my infrastructure on how I should move in Hollywood, you know? Um, but I, I literally just was answering phones and applied from my business side. I was able to get that job. And in that job, I think the, the salary was like $60,000 a year or something like that, right? But because he says, I didn't have the, the Hollywood experience or the film experience, I could only get 45 of that 60 when I got hired. But you know, I was, I was like, okay, you know what I mean? Didn't even, but here we go again, right? It, the, the job was for 60 grand. Mm -hmm. That's what I should have got, you know? If you hire somebody, right? It's mm -hmm. not because, oh, you don't have film background. Then go find someone who has the film background and the business background, or you give me the 60 like everyone else in this office, you know what I mean? So it's always a fight. It's always a struggle, you know? Yes, but that's okay. So you're teaching us so that way we don't have to go through that, which you had to go through. Now, when you say that you quit and um, after that you took a hiatus, but what brought you back into the game was your partner, Deion Taylor. How long was your hiatus before he came into you in your world and you guys started collaborating? Um, just a couple years, you know, and in between that time I was doing music, you know what I mean? Um, so doing a lot of distribution, videos, whatever it was, I was still in production, you know what I mean? So still learning, still growing. Um, but it was a couple years when he came to me saying, you're the only one I know in the Hollywood business. And I'm like, I don't know nothing about no Hollywood. <laughs> so let's go make a movie. I'm like, all right, you know. And so we didn't, we two, the cat, the blind leading the blind, right? Thinking we know what we do, we didn't know nothing. You know what I mean? And literally 
15 years in the game, the last year and a half is when everything started, you know what I mean, shifting a little bit, people noticing the work, you know, being able to create a 360, meaning you can pay back your investors their money and make profits. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's so hard to be able to do that. I mean, this business, you there's no guarantee you, if, that this is going to win any film. You could get the best actors and have the best script, so you think, and it doesn't make any money. You know what I mean? So you're taking a huge risk in all of this when you own your own content. And if we're just work for hire, that's what it is. You come, you get a paycheck and you don't have no skin in the game. So it don't really matter. You know what I mean? But when you're borrowing millions of dollars and, and, and expecting people to bet on you and your vision and your stories, you know what I mean? Then you got to come through, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you got to come through strong because they not going to keep giving you no money if you <laughs> return no money, right? Like, wh what are you doing to get it back? So it, it's, it's, it's a lot. And, you know, being a woman and then being in this high of a, a, high of a position even now, you got to be careful, like, the way you move. You, you, you got to obviously demand the respect you know what i mean but a lot of people don't know how to do that and they treat people you know what i mean the wrong way and you don't have to be like i'm the boss i'm in charge do what i say like you know you just have to figure out a balance there to be respected and get what you need but also still treat people you know what i mean how you want to be treated because the level of the playing field constantly changes, right? And so to, to operate at a certain level, you gotta be a certain way, but you don't have to be, you know. A bitch. I, yeah, I didn't know if I could say that. I didn't know if I could say that. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I've been called many, you know what I mean? But it's more like, as long as you do what you do and you get it done, she cool, but if not, <laughs> she gonna be on your head. You know what I mean? So I'm sure you embrace the term in some cases because men could be called bosses, but we have to be called bitches when we're literally doing the same thing. So it's a way to insert your authority, you know, and being respectful. So I'm sure it's a fine line and like you said, balance to try to figure that it out. Is. I mean, you've been in the rooms when when you've seen strong women walk through and nothing needs to even be said because you already know what they're about and what they represent. You know what I mean? <laughs> Same thing with men, but you know, the, sometimes they're just that way because they're ego, right? Mm -hmm. But women, you really got to create that presence or you will be stepped on. You will be stepped on in this business. And, and, and no matter how much money I've made in the box office and how many people I've employed or what I've done, I've still not I, at the level where a lot of these men are and they've done a fraction of what I've done. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it's, if it, you got to know what you want, you got to know where you're going, you know what I mean? And it's so easy to get distracted and caught up in all that politics of it all, because it can really break you down, you know, and, and, and I've been broke down. I'm not this strong. You know what I mean? I'm a regular person. Like I've cried, I'm broke up every other year or whatever it is. Like, you know, this is, none of this is guaranteed. I have to figure out how to get up every morning, mm -hmm. hype my own, I do a lot of talking to myself. <laughs> What's the one affirmation or mantra or affirmation that you live by? What is it? I don't really have one. It just depends on what I'm going through. It's just like, get, just get up and let's go. Like quit crying, quit sobbing, get your big girl panties on. You know what I mean? And get this done. Like you, you just, I got to hype myself up depending on what it's for. You know what I mean? And what's going on. And I mean, I cry, I get mad, I throw stuff, I cuss people out when I hang up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's that balance you're talking about. <laughs> I write down a lot, I write a lot, you know what I mean? Because 
it's it's so stressful and so demanding you really have to have outlets you know what i mean you got to exercise you got to be able to like step away sometimes and have fun enjoy your family and and do the self love and self care which we all as women often forget because we're always so busy taking care of everyone else we're last on the list you know what i mean and so if you don't especially black women we're like the backbone to the family right they rely on us so much even outside of our you know and inter- cousins uncles it, like everybody relies on you because there's a lot of single family homes there's a lot of people that don't have the infrastructure or the 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 team around them to help you know what i mean and it's a lot of poverty around so oftentimes you're you're really trying to jump in and, and the village is raising all of these kids you know and so <clears throat> i just um coming from nothing and having to struggle you know myself just to even eat sometimes wow. um I just, that's what keeps me going. Like, I'm not gonna, you know, I don't wanna be sleeping on the streets. I don't, I'll I'll work 10 jobs. If if my movie career ends tomorrow, Mm -hmm. I'll go to Burger King, whatever, and apply and work, you know what I mean? And do what I gotta do to survive and take care of, I got three kids over here, I gotta take care of. Speaking of that, you know, a lot of women feel like they can't have it all. I mean, you sitting up here, you're a prime example of the career woman, the mother, the wife. Um, And I know a lot of people just feel like that's just something that they struggle with. I wonder with you, because your partner is, you know, your husband, a lot of people struggle with just trying to figure out what to eat for dinner. (laughs) And you guys are making big box box office films. So how, what does that compromise look like? Oh, how is it collaborating with your husband? And I have to take all that you just mentioned um, a second ago. One day, <laughs> at, one day at a time. <laughs> like, I mean, listen, he's my best friend. I've known him 30 years. I, again, I didn't know I was going to be with him. You know what I mean? So we, I know him inside out. He knows me inside out. We stay in our lane. You know what I mean? And we support each other. Um, when he's down, you know what I mean? I'm bringing him up and vice versa, but we, our roles are our roles and we don't try to interfere in those roles. You know what I mean? It's important for people to stay in their lanes and support the people and what they do instead of trying to take over. You know what I mean? He's creative. And sometimes I'd be like, I can't keep up. Like I can't, he's just a a engine without him. We couldn't, you know what I mean? Make all this content, but I got to keep up to make it come to life, you know what I mean? And so, you know, there is no right answer. I sacrifice every single day with my kids, you know what I mean? Being away, not having the time, but the weekends from Friday to Sunday is no work. It's just, and we all look forward to that. We stay in our jammies, watch (laughs) movies, you know what I mean? And really just, be with each other because if you don't have your family then you don't that's to me that's all this is everything i do this for is for them you know what i mean to make a better life for them but um you know i um i'm i'm doing like i mean this is a dream job right to be able to be doing what you love whatever that is that's your dream job right what you do you love it that's a dream job because you get to wake up and choose and do what you want we get to pick the films that we want to make you know what i mean we get to we get to give black and brown people opportunities in front of the camera and behind the camera that never would have those opportunities you know we've created a platform where we can give back to the community because of all the hard work we've done we could feed families we can give computers we can do life skills camps you know what i mean like it's all about trailblazing the way for the the next people in line you know what i mean and we just never had any of that we've never had we're first generational business owners nobody had no money nobody owned no business nobody went to college You know what I mean? So we, we just figuring all of this out and trying to create a legacy for our family, you know, and you can't be afraid 
to reinvent yourself, right? So even now, like I'm, I'm, you gotta like have multiple baskets that you're putting, working yourself into, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I have this sparkling wine that I wanna launch, right? Mm -hmm. I have my philanthropic or our philanthropic organization climb. Like you gotta like figure out different things that make you move, that make, excite you. So you're always reinventing, like I'm, in my 40s and i don't think the same way that i did when i was in my 20s right so having those paths and those little baby steps to get to your dreams and and following through with them is mm -hmm. is is huge because there's so many people that create ideas and have great ideas i tell this to my daughter all the time she's so creative she has so many great ideas mm -hmm. but the follow through is real how many people follow through if it's not exciting anymore or if you're, you're in a stagnant part and it's not moving? How do you keep pushing through? People give up, you know what I mean? So how do you make those ideas into actual reality is most people drop off. They don't follow through because of whatever adversity they come up against, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I could talk all day about this. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love it. We love it here. We love it here. <laughs> but what I do want to say, because you mentioned a second ago about uh, creating uh, movies that, that you love. So let's talk about one in particular, the most recent one, <laughs> Fatal, starring Hilary Swank and Michael Ely. Talk to me about this project. It was so amazing. I mean, you guys have already done great work prior to this, but I will say, in my opinion, I think this is <laughs> you guys' best work. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. I mean, we worked hard, man. This is this is our biggest movie, independent movie we've done thus far. And you know, you always want to one up yourself. I feel like, right? And thank you for that because you don't often hear that. You know what I mean? People be like, "Oh yeah, it was cool. It was great." You know what I mean? But they they don't always. But I'll tell you, the the fans and the audience have been so kind. Yes, sharing how much they love this movie you yeah. know what i mean and i think i spoke to it to er, to it earlier having the opportunity to work with a hillary swank or anybody at the highest level and for them to believe in us and give us an opportunity and you don't have a lot of money you can't pay these people what they normally get mm -hmm. but you know her and michael ely <clears throat> i feel like any talent if you can get them to believe in the project mm -hmm then you're partnering and you're going right mm -hmm. they'll they'll do whatever right so so our thing is is really trying to make movies for audiences that can engage everybody no matter what you look like no matter what your sexual preference is like we're making movies for an audience that we want you to go for two hours or an hour and a half and escape right and mm -hmm. have a good time talk to the screen see people that look just like you on the screen yeah. You know, given, you know, Michael Ely, man, this dude, he's been what, a household name for how long for the black community? He's made probably a billion dollars in the box office, right? But he's never had, in my mind, an opportunity or a vehicle to show his range like he was able to do in Fatal, to go from zero to a hundred, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And be so flawed and come out on top right and win you know what i mean and do it flawlessly like along the way as as an actor to give him that opportunity to be opposite of hillary swank yeah. two-time academy award winner hillary he, swank, his own. he he went toe to toe yep. <laughs> and she didn't even know who he was when we first entered she had no idea who michael ely was girl i couldn't How? Talk about I said, you don't know who Michael Ely is with the green eyes? Let me send you a picture right quick. She's like, oh, he's nice looking. I said, yeah, girl. That's him. And he can act. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, their chemistry was magnetic. You know what I mean? As soon as they walked in the room together. And listen, we got so many other projects coming coming up, you know, the pipeline, hopefully when this COVID thing works itself out, we'll be able to get these things going. But, 
you know, the John Lewis project. Oh, uh, Brave Hill. You know, we got so many things that that are coming up that I hope we'll be able to have a shot and a real seat at the table. You know what I mean? To be Oscar worthy, nominated filmmakers, producers, you know what I mean? To actually, you know, contend with the real, as they say, Hollywood, right? Yes, yes. Well, listen, you blended that real Hollywood and Michael <laughs> Ely and getting that together. That's so amazing. And thanks for sharing that. I didn't know that Hillary Swank didn't know who Michael Ely was. And like you said, he's been a staple in our community and our culture for so long. I didn't even think that it was just that. I thought he transcended outside of that. I mean, once you start alongside Beyonce in a music video, I was like, okay, everybody should know who you are. Everybody should know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. I mean, I've been following him for so long. Like I said, I mean, he's, he's the leading man in, you know, most of these movies that at least a billion dollars in the box office, yeah. I'm sure that he's made, right? Right. But, people. <laughs> but with Hillary Sway, how, how were you able to get her on board, um, not only as an actor, but as a producer on the project as well? Well, I mean, a lot of, um, listen, we just go, we were told no, we went to the agents, we went to the managers, they probably didn't even share the script with her. They're like, do you know, this is not what she does. You know what I mean? This is yeah. not, her thing, you know, um, do you know who you call in? You know what office you call in? And I mean, you know, that's the attitude, right? Yeah. And we're often, we have to go directly to the talent or to the DPs, you know, that we got to get in the room. We got to like beg them to listen to us and get in the room because as long as we get in the room, we're able to communicate the film and explain the vision yeah and it, it usually it always works right and once we were able to direct connect with her and explain the movie explain the vision and what it represents for the culture and and making her not making her but you know exposing her to the culture in a world that she's not in too right to make her more marketable more viable right in her career and so once we're able to just get in the room with them we're very we're passionate about what we want and what we think is gonna do and they go along for the ride you know what i mean like i said earlier you can't pay her enough right but they gotta believe in the project they gotta believe in you and the producer of it all, you know, she came in very early on. So we were able to be blessed with her process of filmmaking, right? And her and her wisdom on script development and character and story. And so she was very involved in building that out with us to make sure we have a home run. You know, I mean, that that lady, I mean, she's a true professional. Yeah. I mean, when I came on set and, and that first take to watch her and all the takes and I goes this way, I can't even do it. You know, ham moves that way, giving you everything and more, right? We never experienced that. She taught us so much on that set. You know what I mean? Even like the Dennis Quaid's of the world, like they're so good, mm -hmm. right? At what they do, they make you better right they mm -hmm. make you better because they make you think outside of your box right you're you're all in this we're all in these boxes and we're always trying to you know learn more educate ourselves more we're always students if you're willing to learn and we learned so much from her and she came in she was a partner with us you know what i mean most humble person i've ever met you know super philanthropic as well. So anybody who's like has the same visions as you and believes in the same thing. And she also had a very hard, you know what I mean, upbringing. Um, her past was very, very difficult. And the way she gives back and the passion she puts into her work is, is proof on who she is, you know? I love that. Thanks for sharing yeah. that. Now yeah. I'm going to wrap this up with playing a little game I like to call confessional segment. So I'm just going to um, have five, quick, five to six quick questions. It usually warns like one word answers, but it's fun. Nothing crazy. Relax. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
give me your top five favorite filmmakers of all time. Oh my goodness, are you serious? Dion Taylor. <laughs> Come on, wife. Steven Spielberg. Um, I would say um, Quentin Tarantino. Hmm. Um, uh, Ron Howard. Um, who else? I got four. I got four. One boy. Um, favorite. I, I like so many people. Um, I'll say uh, Spike Lee. Okay, come on, Spike. All right. <laughs> Do you have a favorite film of all time? Just one. Trading Places. All day. Ah! Eddie Murphy, yes. Eddie Dream Murphy. collaboration. I know we spoke about Michael Ely. We spoke about, I mean, you work with so many great people, but is there one that you would love to collaborate with? Talent-wise, I mean, I'd love to do like a Marvel film. Um, mm -hmm. You know, talent-wise, um, I would say uh, man, there's so many people. Oh my God. Um, Gotta speak it into existence. Uh, dream collaboration. Dream, dream collaboration. Talent wise. Talent wise. Okay, and I gotta pick one girl. I'll come back to that. We're gonna come back okay, to that. We're gonna come back. Gonna come All, right. Back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If okay, since this is Black History Month, um, and there's so many biopics that's coming out. What's one biopic on a historical black figure that you would love to do? Um, well, John Lewis was one of my favorite and we got the Freedom Ride um, project. So I'm super excited about that. So I think I'm, I might be there. Um, but there's so many, you know, black women, you know what I mean, that, that should be highlighted. But the John Lewis Freedom Ride, I'm so excited about doing this project to be, you know, named next to him. Mm -hmm. And the work, civil work that he's done from the beginning to his death is is completely phenomenal. Amazing. Yeah, it's it's crazy, you know. Okay. Biggest compliment you've ever received? What was it? <laughs> I'm so bad at this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, that I always take try to take care of people. Um, that I always try to take care of, and I care about people's feelings. That is a huge compliment. Please, yeah. I, need to, I need for that to be told. Okay, <laughs> best, best advice someone has given you? Uh, I mean, really just, just never give up. You know what I mean? Keep your eye on the prize and always believe in yourself. You know what I mean? Because yeah. if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. Okay. And now, do you have that dream collaboration? Took a oh, little right. I was supposed to be thinking about no, that. It's okay. <laughs> I, you know what? Yes. Megan Stallion was asked this years ago, and she said, Beyonce, look, fast four years later, she had a oh, no. oh, dog on the billboard. Oh, Sad. I mean, there's so many. I mean, I think I really love Viola Davis. I think she's an incredible actress. I think she's a beast in the game. You know what I mean? And I've followed her work for a really long time. But there, there's so many. To, I, I hate naming certain people because. OK, Viola and, you know, one. And then we're going to look back on this interview and be like, see, she said Viola Davis. And look, <laughs> their film is now starring the Viola Davis. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thank I'll you. take that. You're welcome. Now, last before I let you go, I know you said um, one of the best advice you were given, but any future filmmakers out there, like myself is one included, I'm looking to make films one day. What's the one advice that you would give someone like myself or people out there that's looking to do what you do? Oh, man, you guys, you <laughs> you, you gotta just keep pushing. Like, it's, it's, it's so hard, and you gotta you got to figure out a lane where you want to be in, you know, and you got to be willing to do the work to get there. Mm -hmm. Right. And doing whatever it takes to get there, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of things that you will be put in a corner to do, to be tested. Even if you don't think it's in the job requirements, you know what I mean? And you need to keep a smile on your face and do whatever's required to get there if you want to be there. You know what I mean? Not whatever, 
not to compromise anything that you believe in, but you got to be willing to do the work. Like I said earlier, this is not for everybody. Take the chance, take the steps, create a plan, create a lane, figure out how to get there, right? Keep knocking on the doors, keep banging the doors down, keep calling the people, throwing yourself in their face to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions, right? And don't be afraid if it's not for you or you're not equipped to figure something else out, right? You got to be willing to work for free. If you want to be a costume supervisor, you got to be willing to call them every week and be like, hey, I just want to learn. Can I come work for free, right? You may not even want to do that. Once you get into, you know what I mean? So take the chance, take the risk, do whatever is required to learn the craft. Because if you don't learn the craft, then you're not marketing marketable to anyone else to want to hire you, right? So you need to have that resume and learn and just go all in. Just go all in. Don't be afraid to go all in. Mm -hmm.